Boxing Gyms, G-E-M-S, Boxing Gyms. Check it out, study some of them videos there. The guy's phenomenal. His name is Ryan, I'm telling you. All right, you'll pick up a lot of knowledge there. Fight fam, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification. Class in session. We long awaited Zhu versus Charlo. Charlo got injured. Now it's Tim Zhu versus Tony Harrison, which should be a damn good fight in its own right. Let's get into it. Harrison is a fighter who's typically controlling spacing and pace with an active lead hand. He jabs, probes, and feints with the lead hand, maintaining distance at range or on the outside at his terms. He controls the space in between him and his opponent with punches, punch traffic, or an extended lead hand. Both help defensively as it discourages or at least hesitates his opponent as they wouldn't want to run into resistance immediately while trying to close distance to attacking positions. Harrison also has an educated control game, often using tactics like posting, pinning, framing, and head control to make his transitions to new positions or from offense to defense and vice versa safer and easier. Harrison has one of the best jabs in boxing. What makes his jab so good is that he bases it off timing as well as breaking his own feint and probe rhythms to land solid jabs to the body or head. You'll see Harrison using up-down feints, level changing in the up jabs, touching the opponent's guard to freeze it, blinding the opponent by probing, etc, etc. likely to be an issue in the fight because Tim Zhu always utilizes an active and inactive high guard that isn't very effective with jab defense. When Tim wants the pressure to eventually counterpunch, he can literally become frozen in stance waiting on the counter. That means that every movement after being frozen is 100% reactionary and requires a great deal of anticipation and quick reflexes including the tuck, catch, or blocks with the lead hand to defend a jab. With Harrison's active lead hand constantly probing and fainting, it's likely Tim would have major issues. And after establishing his jab, Harrison deploys a great one-two or jab cross combination. Unfortunately for Tim again, the active or inactive high guard he uses could be problematic facing a very good 1-2 combination when led by a fighter with the active lead hand. The issue with even a good active high guard is that it's reactionary so the shields can be fainted or probed out of position leaving clear openings to the target. After biting on a feint, fighters often want to recover their shield to the original position which causes the opening. Related to the reactionary defense Tim uses, he isn't great at getting his head off the line. While he's been aggressive and set on leading with offense, you can typically find his head in the A slot or on the center line.
Against Charlo, Harrison elected to use the strategy of being an aggressor. He stood stationary in the high guard, traded, or he was walking forward for the majority of the fight. The strategy had him up on one judge's scorecard after 10 rounds, but down on the other two. Many believed that Harrison was winning the fight, including myself. But the risk of constantly being mid-range or inside and 50-50 exchanges eventually saw Harrison stopped in the 11th round because of particular issues. Harrison has a risky penetration step, which I call falling in. It's when fighters throw the jab with the shuffle to close distance. Even if the jab lands, it typically wouldn't throw a high level opponent off from throwing that backhand, which Tony is in the middle of shuffling towards after the jab is fully extended or recoiling. The other issue is while Harrison pressures and especially as he throws the lead hand hooks typically in combination, he has been punished for either keeping or popping his head back up to the A slot. Now, I don't think it's likely, but it's possible Harrison could elect to use the strategy he used versus Charlo. If so, it would allow Tim Zhu to be at his best as he's not just a come forward fighter. He's also a good counterpuncher. Harrison staying stationary would also allow Tim to use high level tactics like probing. The point of his probe game is to occupy opponent's guard away from the intended targets then attack those targets. Tim excels utilizing probes with either hand mid range to inside then opening up with variating offense. The high guard Harrison uses when he stays stationary could also be manipulated by Tim peeling and manipulating his guard. Peels are simply punches or probes that miss purposely to peel the opposite side glove down then attack the opening with the other hand. Harrison would also have to contend with Tim Zhu's pretty good control game. However, against Sergio Garcia, Harrison proved he can fight in a different style and use his legs. Harrison excelled at utilizing reverse steps and lateral movement to set all kinds of different traps and constantly stay off the line of attack or just out of range of the 50-50.
Harrison also knew when and how to clinch and turn or clinch and move center ring when in a tough spot. The strategy seems more likely for Harrison. What's likely to make it effective is Tim's seemingly lackadaisical footwork when he's cutting off the ring and closing distance. Tim crosswalks into position, which leaves him off balance and not ready to defend, and it works against the principles of moving laterally to cut his opponents off and trap them against the ropes. Tim ends up following his opponents using linear movement. If Harrison uses his legs, it still isn't a foregone conclusion. When Tim does eventually trap Harrison and Tony attempts to clinch, Tim is good at breaking the clinch and still getting his offense off. Harrison also has to be mindful of those controls and probes mid-range as we have seen Zoo take advantage with vicious overhands and Harrison isn't known to have the best beard. I think Harrison can outbox Zhu if he chooses the right fight strategy. If he's stationary, I think we see a Zoo knockout victory earlier than when Charla was able to do it. If Harrison uses his legs, I think Harrison can win on points, but it's still possible that one solid overhand or hook from Zoo can change the fight. I'll likely hedge it. Harrison on points and Zoo by knockout. Anyway, I want to know who you got in the comment section. Like, subscribe, and share to spread the knowledge. Join Box of Gems Patreon channel for live film studies, early access, and more exclusive content. Peace.